uh, crime statistics. This is an important moment for our country as it provides us with the opportunity to reflect on the safety and security of our communities while also assessing the progress we've made in the fight against crime. We will also take a moment to reflect on our journey since the beginning of the seventh administration and share progress we have made, the challenges we've encountered and how we're moving forward on those problems. When we first assumed office, we did so with a clear mandate to fight and reduce crime in South Africa as a whole, to ensure safety and security of all South Africans. It's a mandate that is rooted in a commitment to build a safe and secure country, a place where citizens could live free from fear, where our children would grow uh, up without a shadow of violence on their lives, and where justice was not a privilege for the law, for the few, but the right for all. It is also a responsibility not for the subs only, that is South African Police Service only, but the whole of government and the whole of society in South Africa that will fight crime. We have sought to transform the South African Police Service into a modern, efficient and effective service that stands as a protector of all the people, regardless of their socio-economic status, race or background. We have prioritized critical interventions such as bolstering police resources, strengthening our collaboration with communities to ensure that we can prevent crime before it happens, not just respond to it. But we still are going on intensifying a campaign with the partners over and above communities themselves. In addition to this, we've also aligned our departmental organizational structure with the priorities of the seventh administration and in line with the real crime situation on the ground. But while we have made significant strides, the path has not been easy and we know there is still work to be done. South Africa needs to guard against what I refer to as established criminals and criminal organizations who turn criminality into a norm and are intent on making it's a way of life. Let me get a, 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 just a bit of uh, uh, stats. We want to begin by um, identifying what we believe are the core crimes in the country. This is murder, it's attempted murder, assault, uh, GPH, and rape. Now, these are in the category of violent crimes. We're not saying that there's no other crime in the category of violent crimes, but we're saying these are the ones that are uh, the core. And these are the ones that we're prioritizing and focusing on. But the second one uh, or category is gender-based violence, which has become a national priority crime and, uh, uh, and it requires our distinct focus as it continues to devastate families and communities with a unique set of challenges that demand specialized intervention, there are investigations and collaborative so solutions. And in the third category, we are battling the growing uh, menace of organized crime and we're also grappling with economic crimes that threaten the foundation of our economy and the livelihoods of millions of South Africans, including extortion and criminality, criminality on critical infrastructure. From the 1st of July to the 30th of September 2024, 17 community uh, reported serious crimes showed an overall decline of 5.1%, specifically conduct crime decreased by 3%. 
property-related crime saw a reduction of 9.9%. And the other serious crimes decreased by 3.4%. Focusing on conduct crime, the statistics indicate that murder decreased by 5.8%, sexual offenses by 2.5%, and robbery with aggravating circumstances uh, by 8.8%. We note this uh, general decline and, and in specific categories of uh, uh, crime, not in fact categories, specific crimes as it were. Additionally, rape decreased by 3.1% while robbery in, at residential premises and non-residential premises decreased by 1.3% and 21.1% uh, respectively. Among the 17 community reported crimes or crime categories monitored, the only increase observed in attempted murder, assault with uh, grievous bodily harm, intent, and commercial crime, which rose by 2.2%, 1.0%, and 18.5% respectively. Now, despite these gains, the persistence, persistence of high crime rates underscores the urgency of doubling our effort on law enforcement, prevention, and community involvement. But we've made certain achievements which are worth noting. Since the inception of the seventh administration, divisions which have which have sought to strengthen, which we have sought to strengthen, in particular, crime intelligence, uh, technology, and forensic um, unit or division. In all of the three, we are not where we should be. We know that. But that's where we're focusing because we know that when we get to a level where we want them to be, our um, achievements will even be higher than it is at the moment. We've made some inroads as the South African Police Service has through, has, uh, through target uh, targeted operations, strategic deployments, and enhanced policing tactics achieved a number of successes in the fight against crime. I'll mention a few. In Pumalanga, there have been a number of successes worth mentioning uh, today. In July, SAPS arrested uh, 95 Libyan nationals for immigration violence and suspected unlawful military training. Private security industry regulatory authorities, CIRA, played an instrumental role in ensuring that their work would subs. Those responsible for this facility are brought to book. Legal uh, processes are still underway in that regard. Legal mining has been overcome there as well in Pumalanga, following the arrest of 19 undocumented Mozambican nationals for their involvement in illegal mining in Pilgrim's Rest recently. Now, Earlier this month, police arrested a suspect of a high-speed chase involving a Toyota single cab buggy. The White River Flying Squad intercepted the, the vehicle, which was found with an unusual number of firearms in possession of this particular one suspect. Thirteen high-caliber firearms, including AK-47, if I remember very well, eight of them and other high caliber firearms including an R1, an R4, an R5 and all of that and the case is uh, in court and we commend the South African Police Service for their work especially if you take the context in which this happened it was half past four in the, in the, in the morning when they, when they were monitoring and uh, they saw a suspicious car and gave chase now, in Gauteng, crime intelligence achieved notable successes working with SAPS through uh, multi-dimensional investigations. Now, I read it on the 9th of July and covered Mandrix and drug manufacturing tools valued at 2.6 million, result, uh, resulting in four arrests. Now, on 31st July, six suspects involved in kidnapping of a businessman were apprehended and crystal meth worth 300 million was confiscated. Now, throughout July, arrests including drug mules 
in in the airport smuggling narcotics valued in in, in millions, showcasing SAP's determination in combating traf- trafficking. In Limpopo, Robestal first, a clandestine drug lab was discovered with crystal meth, estimated at two billion, which was recovered. Now four suspects, including the farm owner and two Mexican nationals, were arrested. In another intelligence-driven operation, five suspects were arrested on the discovery of a drug manufacturing uh, lab laboratory containing mandrax and equipment worth 3.3 million. The safer festive season operations in the Western Cape are yielding positive results and have led to the seizure of illegal firearms, uh, ammunition and drugs. We are intensifying our efforts to ensure Western Cape is safe and and uh, crime free. We are aware that uh, there are there are challenges as we speak, but we are uh, dealing with them on an ongoing basis. In the free state, free state is largely affected by uh, crimes flowing from KZN, which is uh, their neighbour, Eastern Cape on the other, and uh, Gauteng in the northern uh, side, uh, in, including in the in in the in the arrest. No, including uh, stock theft, um, with uh, which affect uh, the, the the cross boundary kind of uh, criminality. But uh, police in the free state are working hard monitoring all these problems. In Northern Cape subs have been making a significant arrest during various operations, including a recent arrest of four suspects in possession of illegal diamonds. Subs in KZN is making significant progress in dealing with criminal armed gangs and various uh, murder hotspots, and we commend them for this. This includes uh, the recent arrest of five very young uh, criminals, uh, and, and, and what is happening there is a growing gang um, uh, related uh, kind of criminality including firing firearms at random and reckless uh, with recklessness which we cannot tolerate and we are commending police for their for their work the perpetrators responsible for the tragic mass shootings in Lusisi and Kumbu in late September and early October respectively have been arrested and their cases are now being uh, they are now before courts Lusisi and Kumbu mass murder murders correct characterized by family coordinated targeting highlight a grave and unprecedented challenge in combating localized crime networks. These tragic incidents underscore the urgent need to address deeply rooted familial conflicts and improve community engagement to prevent such. Additionally, coordination of criminal activities from within prison facilities remains a significant concern. This is why we've gone out of our way and engaged uh, authorities in the prison uh, uh, department, including the minister, raising our concern about this. The practice, this practice undermines public safety and highlights the need for stricter oversight enhanced security measures within the correctional institutions. Because if you don't do this, it means police will always be in the hand for criminals that they would have arrested, processed through courts and then they get inside prisons and then they start uh, venturing into new crimes. We are working with them and uh, we hope that we we'll turn the corner. We officially entered into cooperation agreements with all the metropolitan uh, municipalities throughout the country. Civilian Secretariat for Police Service played a fundamental role and they still continue to do so. And the sooner have we entered into these agreements, there are processes that they are into, processing uh, further coordination on data, sharing uh, whatever equipment, including cameras, and enhancing policy, policing in those metros who are getting there. And on police misconduct, IP continues to keep policing, uh, police officers in check and will monitor progress. But we, we do want to emphasize that we are dealing with cases of misconduct on the side of uh, police. We don't shy away from any of this and will continue to do so. In late October, the Ministry engaged with the Cash and Transit Association 
of South Africa, CETASA, to address the persistent issue of cash in transit highs. The collaboration led to establishment of a working group and initiated a, dra a drafting of the Memorandum of Understanding, uh, reviewing the, uh, the current one and enhancing it and ensuring that we um, uh, bring in quality in terms of our relations with uh, CETASA, uh, even at operational level. Now, efforts are underway uh, to uh, complete all those processes, and we have, uh, uh, we're quite happy that we're making progress, uh, tangible progress in this regard. Operation Chanela has proven highly successful, leading to 262,396 arrests, uh, 7,549 high-density high operations, and over 8 million actions executed. Public order, order policing achievements in the second quarter of 2024-2025 include 2,756 arrests with seizures of counterfeit goods with 22.2 million, 93 firearms, and 846 rounds of ammunition. Border policing efforts resulted in 6,610 arrests and significant confiscations including drugs worth 498 million, firearms, explosives, and stolen vehicles valued at 66.9 million. There is agency to overhaul policing um, in all ports of entry, including in, in, in border policing. We note this is something that stands out as a challenge. We will be uh, going there um, to review uh, uh, current uh, uh, status of our policing in this particular important um, uh, areas of our work. Now there is a need for closer cooperation and collaboration between SAPS, uh, Justice, NPA and Home Affairs to make Operation Chanela much more effective in relation to different crimes and criminals. Some of the criminals that Operation Chanela collects need to be processed uh, as they would be foreign, they would be uh, coming from outside South Africa and therefore needing home affairs and all of that. We are aware of this, we are uh, concerned about this uh, um, matter and hence the call for closer operational collaboration. Specialized operations recorded 87 arrests, confiscating 76 firearms, 2,513 rounds of ammunition, and recovered 29 vehicles. These are stolen uh, vehicles. High-profile criminals were convicted and successful operations against drug collaborators, you know, laboratories were conducted. Advanced forensic techniques have also expedited investigations and improved crime scene analysis, ensuring efficient processing of identification of victims in criminal incidents. These accomplishments align the SAP's capacity and determination to bring perpetrators to justice. The second quarter of significant strides in the justice system led to 265 life sentences, including 222 individuals, including 61 for murder and 98 for rape. Additional 22 individuals received sentences of 40 years or more, reflecting the department's commitment to delivering severe penalties for, security, for serious uh, crimes. DPCI, which uh, focuses on organized crime, have also done some significant strides. In police killings, for instance, 17 police officials were murdered, 13 off duty, 4 on duty. The directorate arrested 17 suspects and secured 7 convictions, including 4 life sentences. I just uh, need to add uh, that we have been exploring possibilities as to how SAPS can assist families with civil claims against those responsible for murders, for murder of police officers. In fact, a decision has been taken and our structure, the organization, the, the organization structure now reflects a unit that will deal with this among others. So that those who continue uh, to uh, venture into killing police, uh, not only do they get arrested, processed in courts and sentenced, but we pursue them uh, in, uh, civilly 
uh, because an attack against the uh, police we continue to say is an attack against the state and therefore you must be extremely uncomfortable if not uncomfort un uncomfortable throughout your lifetime when you do such now arrests and uh, um now drug seizures drugs valued at seven at uh, 77,000 no 77.7 million were seized Additional five suspects were arrested for manufacturing drugs with an estimate of two billion on a farm near Hroblas Dal, as I've indicated above. Firearms and ammunition confiscated, including 84 firearms, 2,069 rounds of ammunition, and seven explosives. Now, cash in transit, the directorate responded to 58 CIT incidents, arrested 49 suspects including 15 who died in shootouts with police. No suspects were granted bail. A total of 115 suspects were arrested for CIT and related crimes, leading to 43 convictions, six life sentences, and a combined 931 years of imprisonment. And when, we talk, when we talk about life imprisonment, our prayer is always that it be so. Now, money laundering, uh, 44 suspects were charged with money laundering, with 15 convicted, and 1,513 counts uh, under poker. Financial orders, the directorate issued 75 freezing and forfeiture orders, totaling 72.98 million. State capture, uh, 35 suspects, individuals, uh, 27, eight companies, were arrested in connection with cases from Zondo Commission recommendations. Three cases were finalized, resulting in one conviction with 15 year, um, a 15-year fraud sentence. Now, there are still a total of 35 uh, suspects uh, under, uh, in, the, in the, uh, this case called uh, VBS, related matters. Uh, for now, there are four convictions. Now, on illegal mining, Illegal mining remains a significant threat to our economy and public safety in a number of ways. The ministry, uh, Ministries of Oversight Inspection at the Steelfontein Shaft has brought renewed focus on this issue. We are satisfied that police, South African Police Service and the department as a whole, um, that their actions in Steelfontein are all in keeping with the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa and the laws thereof. Now, what we want to say is that no legal minor will remain underground forever. Now, we need to optimize in order to achieve this, our cooperation and coordination with all those concerned, including um, the private sector, including DMR, including other government departments, and including uh, communities in the affected area and other areas we are going to be venturing to. This is very important so that we maximize our understanding. We note and welcome uh, the uh, judgment um, dismissing uh, the application brought forward by Society for the Protection of the Constitution. We sought to, among other things, compel various government departments, including SAPS, to provide all necessary emergency disaster relief to illegal miners such as food and, and, and other, and other uh, things like medical aid, uh, blankets and so on. But we do want to note that we do understand that in South Africa uh, uh, lack of uh, jobs and uh, poverty and even lack of food uh, to eat sometimes drive people to do things that otherwise in normal circumstances they wouldn't have done. We also know that um, uh, there is um, there are two un, uh, non-negotiable uh, provisions of our constitution: the right to life, but also um, uh, the right to dignity. And therefore, when we uh, perform uh, our duties under Operation Vula, we are, we, we are aware and, and cognizant of uh, uh, these uh, rights, but we. Uh, venture into um, uh, uh, finding our way uh, to uphold the law, because at the end of the day we have to uphold the law under those circumstances and limited as they may be. 
And so we welcome uh, the decision of the High Court um, uh, today. Now, on uh, foodborne, on foodborne illnesses, which has recently engulfed our country, the role of SAPS will be to, to and is to uphold the law and enforce it and support, uh, and support local government, health and environmental officials. We're emphasizing this that it shouldn't be expected out there that police are going to, at random uh, and outside the law, um, uh, conduct raids throughout the country. Local government um, would continue to lead, and and the environmental officials will continue to lead, with us supporting them in this regard. We commend SAPS in all provinces for work they have done in this regard so far, including arresting those who are found to have breached the law uh, in regard to this matter. When we reflect on this period, we want to mention a few things that as the administra as, 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 as uh, we, we have in this current administration made certain achievements and we know them. Uh, and, 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 and the ones that were mentioned are just but uh, a, a few that we have been able to mention. But we acknowledge challenges that remain. Crime fighting requires relentless determination collaboration and resourcefulness. The SAPS continues to ad adapt to evolving criminal tactics and leveraging intelligence and technology to stay ahead. The JCPS cluster needs to focus on harmonizing the country's crime and corruption strategies while strengthening and honing our organized crime strategies part thereof. Parallel to this, our architecture to fight crime and corruption needs to receive our attention. Economic growth in South Africa will go a long way in creating an environment of job creation and thus removing some of the people from streets uh, to occupy themselves ways of survival. The provinces are our, our, are our engine rooms in the fight against crime. The ministry recently convened a high level strategy session uh, on, uh, with SAPS top management, including provincial commissioners, to focus our attention on specific crimes and to step up our actions against uh, identified crimes. And at this stage, I want to conclude, fellow South Africans, our goal is clear, to reduce crime and build safer communities for all. As the ministry, we have confidence in the SAPS, all of them, all South African police, um, the men and women in blue, we trust them, even at times when some individuals among them prove that they are not worth trusting. We deal with those uh, who embarrass us, those who uh, uh, are deviant in terms of their actions and behavior. But in the majority of cases, the vast majority of subs uh, are committed in upholding the law and we, we, we commend them. And we have um, um, confidence in the National Commissioner, General Masimula, sitting there, and, and we have confidence in our provincial commissioners. To every South African, continue to believe in a better future, know this. South African Police Service, Ministry, and all the components of our portfolio are committed to to make sure South Africa is safer uh, than yesterday. And we will not rest until we achieve peace and security that every citizen deserves. The path forward demands unity of peoples, not just among law enforcement agencies, but across all the sectors of society. We just remain vigilant, steadfast, and united in our, in our shared goal. And at this stage, uh, I know that uh, Gamo, uh, but without saying so, uh, it's your turn, sir, uh, to provide uh, uh, details in the in the states. Thank you very much. Thank you very much,
Thank you, Minister uh, of the Police, the DNs, uh, the National Commissioner, the Head of Secretariat, that is Bui, all the DNCs, of the Head of the DPCI, all the DNCs, and the colleagues on the platform, and members of the media. The unfortunate thing is I had my notes on the paper which I'm not going to be able to use. I will rely on the screen and hopefully that uh, I can remember what uh, I had on my notes. But then without uh, much further ado, let's uh, go into the details of the crime statistics. Thank you. Uh, as is the norm, when we present the quarterly crime statistics, we give an overview of the five-year trend of the crime that had been reported to the police. And uh, we cover the second quarter, which covers the period from the 1st of July up to the 30th of September. And then give a brief overview in terms of the crimes that have been reported to the South African Police Service. Starting with the uh, contact crimes, we have recorded a decrease in terms of the murders, 400 compared to the previous comparable period, sexual offenses reduced by 325, and this is made up of the crimes that are indicated here underneath, made up of rape, uh, sexual assault, attempted sexual offenses, and contact sexual offenses. We, however, recorded an increase in terms of the attempted murders of 150, assault with uh, intention to commit grievous bodily harm, an increase of uh, 424. Then common assault, we had a reduction of 626. Uh, common assault, we had uh, common robbery, we had a reduction of 775. And robbery with aggravating circumstances, which is made up of these crimes underneath here, led by Kaji King, whereby we recorded the reduction of 562, robbery at residential premises, a reduction of 78, robbery at non-residential premises, a reduction of 1037, and these three crimes, according to the victims of crime survey, these are the crimes that are most feared, and then we then term them the trio crimes. So the sum total of the reduction of these trio crimes is 1,677. Then uh, we also had a reduction in terms of uh, robberies of cash in transit. We did not have any reported bank robberies and we also had a reduction in terms of the truck hijacking. On the next slide, we use the mid-year population estimates as obtained from Status A, the 2021 series, whereby we take uh, the per capita crimes whereby the victim is a person and we take into consideration the total number of people in the country. So when we do that for the murders, we have a per capita murder of 11 to 100,000. I think uh, as, as we've been explaining, this is an instance whereby if you take the total population of the country and divide it into 100,000 equal portions, the chance of a person ending up being a victim of murder is 11 per 100,000. Then the rape, same, following the same analogy, it's a 16 per 100,000. Don't be surprised because I'm rounding it off as I'm going through the presentation. The attempted murders is 11 per 100,000. Assault GBH is 69 per 100,000. Common assault is 72 per 100,000. And common robbery is 19 per 100,000. Then completing the table which gives a summary, we then move on to what attempt the contact, contact related crimes made up of the two crimes that is arson and malicious damage to property, whereby we have recorded the reduction in both of the two crimes, or in the two crimes that is a reduction of 157 
and uh, 2,133 respectively, and the sum total of the reduction for the contact-related crimes is 2,290. We then had a clean sheet for the crimes that are related to property, which are 10 property-related crimes, leading with a reduction of burglary at non-residential premises. This would include your business premises and also those premises that are not in the normal uh, utilization are used for residential purposes. This would include your churches, your schools, etc., etc. So it is not only business premises, but it includes churches and, uh, as I've indicated, schools, etc. Whereby we had a reduction of 3,202. Baglaria at, residen at residential premises, we had a reduction of 3,520. Theft of motor vehicle and motorcycle, we had a reduction of 800, 989. Theft out of or from motor vehicle, a reduction of 2,030. Stock theft, a reduction of 286. And the sum total of the property related crime reduction is 9,127. Then other serious crimes, starting with the all theft not mentioned elsewhere, we had a reduction of 6,553. And then we had an increase in terms of the commercial crime, and this increase is across all the nine provinces. The commercial crime are mostly your fraud and your money market related crimes, etc., which, which make up this category which we call commercial crime. Then we had a shoplifting, a reduction of 2,960 other serious crimes, which is the sum total of the three crimes that I've uh, mentioned, a reduction of 3,843. And for the 17 community reported crimes, as the minister has indicated, we recorded a reduction of 5.1. Then the, set, the next set of crimes, these are called the crime detected as a result of police action, which is a proxy for proactive policing initiative whereby the police would set, a, would set up a vehicle checking point and also roadblocks in an effort to retrieve illegal firearms and ammunition. The desired rejection of change for these crimes in contrast to the 17 community reported crimes is that these crimes should be on the increase, meaning that if they are on the increase and indicated as green, it means that more and more firearms and ammunition are taken out of the wrong hands. We have managed to increase illegal possession of firearm and ammunition arrest by 341 counts. Drug-related crimes, these are people who are uh, arrested for their own safety because they are utilizing drugs, etc. And uh, we had 4,626 and include those people that are doing uh, or conducting uh, what you call drug labs, etc. Driving under the influence of alcohol or drugs, we had increased by 1,924. Then sexual offenses detected as a result of police action, it has increased by 775. And the sum total of the crime detected as a result of police action increased by 7,668. Now, on these slides that are following, we give a, a breakdown in terms of the provinces for the 17 community reported crimes as a summary, and we give the provincial breakdown. So I will not go into each and every province, but I will just only indicate the provinces where the particular crime category has recorded an increase. As you can see, for the nine provinces, the only province which had recorded an increase was the province of KwaZulu-Natal, whereby we had an increase of 60 counts more compared to the previous comparable period, and all the other eight provinces recorded a reduction. And when you do a month-on-month -month comparison for the quarter, for the months that cover this quarter, that is starting from July, August, and September, we had managed to achieve a reduction across all the three months that make up the court. Then on the next slide, we look at the, what it's a proxy for what you, you might refer to as hotspots, whereby we look at the total number of crimes within this particular, within this particular period, which of the stations have recorded the highest number of crimes for this particular quarter. 
We know that uh, the province with the highest number of uh, reported 17 community reported crimes is the Devon Central, which recorded 3,008 counts of uh, 17 community reported crimes. However, it also achieved the reduction of 266. The second one is Devon Central, which recorded 2,111 and also received, uh, achieved the reduction of 317. Then we had Mitchell's Plain at number three, with 1,876 counts of uh, 17 community reported crimes and achieved a reduction of 415. And then number five is uh, Johannesburg Central. We I think we have an increase at number four for Park Road with 1,867. Uh, and then the increase is 69. And the fifth. Uh, is Johannesburg Central with 1,861 and the reduction there is 223. The appropriate way to read this table is that on the first column we indicate that particular station when you take all the stations in the country and then you sort in terms of the highest number of crimes that have been reported in that particular station. We sort by descending order meaning the one that is at the top will be the station which has recorded the highest number of 17 community reported crimes. And then on the second column, we look at that station, but then contextualize it within the particular province in which that station is situated in. So most likely the station that is number one at the national is also likely to be number one within the province. However, as you can see, especially on Michel's Plain. Michel's Plain at the national level is at number three. However, within the province, the Western Cape, is this at number two. So I hope that clarifies them the way in which this table should be read. Then moving on to the, we started with the 17 community reported crimes. Now we are at the contact crimes, which are those crimes that are made up of murder, attempted murder. Uh, total sexual offenses, uh, robbery, residential and non-residential, and also your assaults and the uh, previous bodily harm. As I've indicated, I will only touch on those provinces that had recorded increases for the current quarter. And then uh, these provinces are made up of uh, KwaZulu-Natal, which had recorded an increase of 416 counts. The second province which had recorded an increase was the Free State with 15 counts and then the third is the Eastern Cape with 6 counts. However, the total number of crimes that had been reported within those particular provinces are indicated in the second row. That uh, if you use that analogy, we have uh, KwaZulu-Natal having uh, reported 28,446 counts uh, when compared to the 28,080 that was reported in the previous comparable period, and the difference is 416 to the red, and the percentage change is uh, 1.5. At the bottom there, we have the percentage contribution of that particular province when you take into consideration those uh, particular crimes. As one can see, KwaZulu Natal. Uh, contributed 17.7% to the national total, was uh, Houting 26.6%, uh, Eastern Cape 10.9%, Free State 6.2%, and then the rest can be read from the uh, Western Cape, contributed 17.4%. Then on this slide, we look at the top 30 contact crime stations. The stations that are in yellow are the stations that uh, we monitor throughout the financial year in terms of their progress in and out of the top 30 stations because uh, there will be resources allocated to those and there will be interventions and then we will monitor throughout the course of the financial year whether the interventions that are happening within those stations are yielding results etc. So these are the stations that will be monitored for the 2024-2025 for contact crime stations. These are the ones in yellow. Then uh, the contact crime station is uh, in Fuleni in the Western Cape at number one and Delft at number two. These two stations 
are both in the Western Cape. At number three, we had Inanda. Number four is Johannesburg Central. And number five is Nyanga. And these are the stations that make up the top five in terms of contact crimes or crimes against the person. Then we look at the crime or at the causative factors. We've indicated that, uh, as the minister was uh, indicating, the crime that have been focused on, you mentioned the murders and the attempted murders, rapes, etc. So we also went into trying to understand what are the causative factors of these high levels of murder that we, we have uh, observed in the current quarter. So we took a sample of 6,323 counts of the murders that had been reported to the South African Police Service, and then we tried to look into what were the causative factors for these particular murders. We found that 1,069 were attributable to arguments, misunderstanding, and road rage. 386 were as a result of a robbery. We also had 372 of the murders as a result of vigilantism or mob justice. 221 were gang-related, and the majority of those that were termed to be gang-related are in the province of the Western Cape. 87 were taxi-related, and then uh, we also had uh, 45 of the murders that were law enforcement and security guards in the line of duty. And if you, this exclude police officers, and if you were to add the police officers that were killed, this number would rise to somewhere in the region of 64 or 63, meaning that uh, we are losing uh, more and more law enforcement personnel that covers your JMPD, police, etc. Then we also had uh, 19 of the murders that were rape-related. That would be an instance where a person is raped and subsequently killed. Then we looked at the uh, selected places of occurrence for the murders. I will only focus on the murders. I think the rest of the crimes can be read off from the slide. We use the same sample size of 6,323 and uh, we looked at the places of occurrence in the previous slide. We were looking at the causative factors. Why were these people murdering each other? Now we look at where did these murders occur? We found that 3,632 happened at a public place. 1,735 of the murders happened at the residences of the perpetrator victim including residents known by victim perpetrators, etc. This might be an indi in indicator that uh, there's an element of uh, people that are acquainted to each other, or there might be a social element within the causative or the places where these murders are happening. Then we also had 281 of the murders that had taken place at liquor outlets. Then uh, I'll just pick and choose those that uh, we think uh, we need to be aware of. We also had uh, 30 of the murders that had taken place at petrol stations or petrol premises including ATM convenience stores etc. And the majority of these that happen mostly at petrol stations uh, have that element of a kind of a heat. We also had 13 of the murders that had happened at educational institutions that include your schools, universities, colleges and daycare center and nine of the murders happened at abandoned buildings. Then on the next slide, we look at the crimes against women and children. For this uh, category of uh, the population, we look at the murders, attempted murders, and assault GBH. We observe that uh, there were 76 counts more of uh, women that were murdered when compared to the previous comparable period. And attempted murders, there was an increase of 53, and we had a reduction of 35 counts when compared to the previous uh, period for women. For the children's side, that will be your both boys and girls between the ages of 0 to 17. We unfortunately had increases across the three crimes that we are looking at, 22 more murders for children, uh, 129 more murders, attempted murders for children, and also 124 more uh, assault GBH committed against children. Then uh, for the provincial comparison, the provinces which recorded increases in terms of the murder is your northwest with 12 counts more compared to the previous comparable period. 
and then Limpopo we had six counts more compared to the previous comparable period and also the Eastern Cape with three counts more. All the other provinces, the six that I have not mentioned exclusively recorded decreases. And then on the next slide we look at the per capita for murder, that is the instances where you take into consideration the population within that particular province and the total number of murders that had been reported within that particular province. For the Eastern Cape, we have observed that uh, the per capita made up for Eastern Cape is 20 per 100,000, and that is the highest per capita for the country when you take into consideration the nine provin provinces. The second is the Western Cape with 14 per 100,000, KwaZulu Natal at 12 per 100,000, Houting at uh, 9 per 100,000, and the province with the lowest per capita made up is the province of Limpopo with uh, four per hundred thousand. And this is a graphical representation of the trend that we have indicated in the previous slide, whereby we did the same computation and we simply indicate in terms of the lightness or the deeper, the, the, the deepness of the color to indicate the severity of the per capita for that particular province. One can see Limpopo is the lightest, which is the one that had the least per capita matter, and the province with the highest per capita matter is the Eastern Cape with 90 or 20 per 100,000, and these are the media population estimates that we have used to compute the, the these per capita matters. And this is just the direction, it's not statistics, it's just not west and south. Then we then look at the stations that had the highest medas. The station with the highest medas in terms of the raw numbers, not per capita, is the province of Inanda with 81. Number two is Philippi East. Number three is Kwazakele. Number four is Delft. And number five is Nyang. Of these top five stations, the top three have recorded the increases, whereby Inanda recorded an increase of five counts more. Philippi East, an increase of 28 counts more. Kwazakele, 29 counts more. And then Delft and Nyanga recorded reductions of 12 and 7, respectively. I think I've already touched on this table, What, how different it is from the table that I have previously indicated for the causative factors. Is that, that the, these pro, uh, causative factors are now... Uh, are, are, are distributed in terms of the provinces. And I have indicated that uh, for the murders that had been termed gang-related, the 221, the majority was in the Western Cape, whereby uh, it recorded uh, 177 of the murders that were attributed to gang-related. Houting had 24, and then uh, the Eastern Cape had 18. And then when one look at the taxi-related of the 87 matters that were attributable to taxi-related, Houting was the highest province with 56 counts. And those that were as a result of misunderstanding or arguments, the 1,069 that we have indicated, most of these were indicated to have taken place in the province of the Eastern Cape, which is 325 attributable to arguments and misunderstanding. And the second highest province that indicated uh, the causative factor of arguments and misunderstanding was the Western Cape with 228. Then uh, this slide again is just uh, a similar slide, but this time around it gives you the places where these matters uh, have taken place. Then we also had uh, instances whereby uh, more, more people were killed in one setting. And then, uh, again, this is just to emphasize the issue of, uh, you know, when, when one look at the murders, one need to also keep in mind that some of these murders, it's uh, murders whereby many people are killed in one incident. And we are all familiar with the story of uh, what happened in Lusikisiki, whereby 18 people were killed in one instance. And then we also had an, the, the incident in Kanala, whereby eight people were killed. And this particular uh, incident in Kanala also re resulted in 12 attempted murders. Then we also had uh, seven victims that were killed in high flats, 
six in Umlazi, five in Puking, and we also had five in Bromor Spring, which also resulted uh, in uh, attempted murders. And I remember this one of the ones in uh, Bromor Spring. The people were suspected to be Boko Haram members who went to then try to extort money from the, the construction site. Unfortunately, they met their demise there. Then there's an issue of uh, the weapon of choice that is used in terms of the commission of these murders. And as one can see from the sample size that we have uh, drawn of 6,323, it has indicated that uh, the weapon of choice that was used in the commission of these uh, murders was a uh, firearm that had been used in 2,976 counts. And again, we need to keep in, in mind, in the back of the mind, that uh, this does not imply that there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the total number of bodies and the firearm that had been used. As we have indicated that there was an incident in Lusigisiki and all these multiple murders that we had seen where more people were killed in one incident. Again, it's not to say that there were 2,976 firearms that were used to kill 2,976 people. Then, on the next slide, we, we then look at the murder of the police uh, uh, members. We had uh, 17 of these uh, murders that had been, you know, it's a reduction of 17 from the previous comparable period. And then we had those that were killed on duty. I think uh, two were responding to a scene. One was in a, at, the, at the scene where there was a cross uh, exchange of firearm with the people that uh, were committing a crime. And one, one thing that we also need to take into consideration is that even though these murders are committed by police officers in the execution of their duty, in terms of the crime statistics, this also add to the number of murders that have been reported in the country and we seriously need to look into this issue in terms of should these murders add to those numbers or should they be excluded from this because these are law enforcement people that are executing their duties. But unfortunately, in terms of the acts, several acts, we had to add them to the murders. I think, uh, can you check the time for me? We then look at the, okay, I think I need to hurry up now. Uh, we then look at the rapes. In terms of the rapes, uh, we had uh, provinces that recorded increases was the province of uh, Mbumalang with 42 counts and Houten with 75 counts and then the rest of the provinces recorded uh, decreases. That is in terms of the rapes. Then uh, per capita, the province with the highest per capita rape was the province of the Free State which recorded 24 per 100,000 followed by the Eastern Cape with uh, 23 per 100,000 and then the Northwest with uh, 19 per 100,000 and so was the Northern Cape. And then in terms of the graphical representation, we see that the province with the highest per capita rate for the whole country, the, the province with the highest per capita rate is the Free State, then the second highest is the province of the Eastern Cape. Then uh, the stations, the first two are stations from Guazulu Natal, that is your Inanda and Umlazi. The third one uh, at the national level is Toyando, and station number four and five is uh, Mfuleni and um, Tata, that are in the Western Cape and the Eastern Cape respectively. And all the top five stations have recorded increases in terms of the number of rapes that have been reported in the current court. Then uh, looking at the sample of 7,165 in terms of the places of occurrence for this rape, over 60% of these rapes have taken place at the residence of the perpetrator or the victim, uh, including residents known by the victim. That is 4,303. And so one can easily see that uh, there is an element of the people that are raping and uh, being uh, victims of rape that they know the perpetrators and in some instances it includes family members friends and, 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 and neighbors 
Then we also had uh, those rapes, 106 that had taken place at educational institutions. We also had 80 that had taken place at the abandoned buildings. Then uh, looking at the issue of alcohol and drugs in the commission of the murders, we had seen that uh, 227 of the murders, it was indicated that uh, the perpetrator had or the victim had used uh, alcohol during the commission of the murder and we also noticed that 1,466 rape incidents it was indicated that uh, it involved the use of alcohol. Those murders that had taken place exclusively at the place where alcohol has been uh, indicated to, to be sold were 281 murders that had taken place at confirmed uh, places where alcohol is being sold, like a tavern, shebin, pubs, and nightclub. And we also had 3,493 of the assault GBAs that had taken place at such facilities, and also 62 rapes where alcohol is being sold. Then uh, the murders and rape at the educational premises, the, the yellow color indicates uh, the rape and the blue indicated the murders. We had 77 rapes that had taken place at school and 13 of the rapes that had taken place at school. Then we also had uh, 15 of the rapes taking place at the tertiary institutions, then 8 at daycare center and 6 at specialized schools. Then uh, we then look at the, who were the victims and the perpetrators in terms of the murders. We saw that uh, at the school level, three of the perpetrators were learners and also three of the victims were learners. Then uh, this is a three-way table whereby the first column gives you the, the premises, the second gives you the perpetrator, and then uh, this one gives you the victim. So that is how this table should be read. Then uh, at the rapes, we then, uh, those that had taken place at the educational premises, we saw that uh, there were 77 rapes that had taken place at schools and the breakdown per province has been indicated. And of these uh, provinces, the two provinces with the highest number of rapes that had taken place at the educational premises or schools was Gauteng with 16 and Guazulu Natal with 13. Then uh, this gives uh, the, it's again another three-way table whereby if we look at the schools, we see that uh, 52 of the perpetrators were learners and so were 52 of the victims of rape were also learners. Then on the next slide, we use the selected domestic violence as a proxy for rape. We see that uh, in instances whereby there's a, some kind of a domestic relationship between the victim and the perpetrator, there were 207 murders that was indicated that uh, there was this uh, kind of relationship, and the victims was uh, female in 106, and then the male were in 101. For the rape, we had 809, and the victims for the rape were 765, and for male, we had 44. Then I'll skip the sexual assault and then uh, move into the carjacking. For carjacking, the only two provinces that recorded increases was the province of uh, the Eastern Cape and the Northern Cape, which uh, increased by four and two respectively. And the stations that uh, are in the top five in terms of uh, carjacking was Philippi East, Delft, Orange Farms, Nyanga, and Gugulechi making the top five. Then uh, these are the type of uh, vehicles that are most likely to do, end up being hijacked. The majority of these are sedans, hatchback, and coupes, whereby it was indicated in 2,501, and 1,830 1, were bikes. Robbery at residential premises, only two provinces are recorded decreases, and this was the province of Gauteng and KwaZulu Natal and all the other provinces recorded increases. Then I will skip this slide and go to robbery at non-residential premises. The only province that recorded an increase in terms of robbery at non-residential premises was the Northern Cape, which recorded one count higher. Then uh, robberies of cash in transit, we had uh, 
four provinces that had recorded increases. That is your free state with four counts more, KwaZulu Natal, three counts more, and so was the Western Cape with three counts more. And then uh, we also had Northwest, which had one count more in terms of robbery of cash in transit. And the breakdown in terms of the robberies of cash in transit, we had uh, 18 incidents where the armored vehicle was on the road, and the breakdown was that uh, nine was in KwaZulu Natal, and then uh, three in the Eastern Cape, two in Gauteng, and then where, where there were cross pavements, we had, uh, I, I was initially given 45 minutes, so I set the timer to 35. So in terms of what I was allocated, I still have 10 minutes to wrap up. <laughs> so it's not to say that I must stop. We had 15 that were cross pavements made up of Houting, Western Cape, Northwest, and then we also had one that was when the armored vehicle was static and six were at the merchant retail. Then this is just the breakdown. Truck hijacking, only two provinces recorded increases, which was your Northwest and Limpopo, one count each. Then uh, the stations with the highest in terms of truck hijacking, uh, mostly are in the province of Gauteng, like the top four are all in the Gauteng province, that is your Number one at Alberton, Kempton Park, Orange Farm, and Heidelberg. And that trend is broken by station number five, which is Schwarzkopf in the Eastern Cape. And then the trend continues all the way up to station number 11, whereby the provinces, the, the stations are all in the Houghton province. Then we also had the phenomenon of kidnapping. Here we look at the crime that had been reported as kidnapping. And within that kidnapping, we look into the comments that had been indicated to determine whether there was a ransom demanded or extortion uh, in, in that instance, and also whether there was human trafficking. We looked at the sample size of 3,995, and we found that a, a ransom was demanded in 180 of these instances, and then 113 of these 180 was in the province of Houting. For those that kidnapping related, that were uh, extortion, of the 29, 15 was in the province of uh, Gauteng and also at five in the Western Cape. Of course, there will be the instance whereby when you extract extortion as a crime code itself, you might come to different numbers, but these ones are extortions which also included the uh, kidnapping. Those that were ransom related, uh, the provinces that recorded increases is Eastern Cape, Gauteng, Pumalanga, Northwest, and the Western Cape. Then we also have these, what are called the core diversions. These are instances whereby the resources of the police are required to go and police other instances which are not necessarily within the core mandate of the police. This would include instances like uh, when the police escort exam papers, when they go and uh, observe at matches to ensure that uh, the people that are watching matches, etc., uh, do not uh, end up uh, harming themselves. So this gives a breakdown in terms of those instances. The orange color indicates those instances which were tend to be peaceful. That was in 1,176 instances, and these were mostly in the province of KwaZulu Natal, which indicated 30. 436 of these instances were indicated to be unrest related. And this is more of a summary in terms of when one look at the national and then the provinces uh, for the respective crime. We've seen that there were 400 matters less for the national picture. And then when you look at the provinces, these are the total number of matters that had been reported within that respective province. However, the color coding indicates whether that province had recorded an increase or a decrease. If you were to take the Eastern Cape, the 1,315 does not mean that there were 1,315 more murders in the Eastern Cape. It simply indicates that there were 1,315 murders in the Eastern Cape, and this number is an increase when compared to the previous comparable period. I think uh, we can be in a position to read this uh, table without me going into each and every province, each and every crime. 
and then I believe that uh, this is just the continuation of that uh, first slide and then uh, this is the summarized version in terms of the provinces whereby you look at the province take uh, for instance Houting of the 17 community reported crimes Houting decreased 15 of these crimes and only recorded an increase in two instances I think uh, this is the same analogy and the uh, Minister, National Commissioner, and all the members of the media. This is where I stopped. And uh, again, this presentation will be loaded onto the SAPS website, and those that uh, have smart uh, phones, they can scan the QR code, and then it will take them directly to where they can be in a position to download the full presentation, including the drop-down menus that we have provided in case one wants to see a particular province or a particular station. I thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.